without a space shuttle alternative. The United States had been dependent upon Russia to keep an American presence on the International Space Station. For the last nine years, we have been purchasing rides on Russian Soyuz rockets, and those costs have gone up significantly. Costs of nearly $4 billion. The International Space Station is a critical capability for the United States of America. Having access to it is also critical. There's a lot of significance to bringing these missions back to American soil. First is an alternative to the Soyuz solution that's out there. But uh, as an American, I I'm just proud of what we'll be able to accomplish to and fly again on an American rocket Two, from American soil. And lift off of it's remarkable to think that the last time that uh, a, a crewed launch vehicle departed from the United States was 2011. And so I think it would be really quite profound to be back in the saddle again and to be launching frequently. And the mission demonstrates a remarkable role reversal for how America goes to space. And this time when we do it, we're doing it differently than we've ever done it before. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate the hardware. In fact, we're going to be a customer. With both Dragon and Starliner programs in the works, NASA has redundancy, something they depend on in all aspects of spaceflight. Once this test mission is complete, Dragon will be cleared to fly official crewed missions, and Starliner will continue development of their program. SpaceX has been hauling cargo on Dragon to ISS since 2012. We've flown Dragon uh, to and from the space station successfully uh, 20 times for cargo mission. They successfully completed the first test run of the all-new Crew Dragon to the ISS in 2019. Last year, we had our demonstration one mission, which was the, the Crew Dragon uh, without any crew on board went to the space station, they opened up the hatch, and then came back home. Demo 1 marked the first time in history a spacecraft docked autonomously without help from the mothership. Who was in the driver's seat? A test dummy. This new mission, known as NASA's SpaceX Demo 2, is the final major test to certify SpaceX's revolutionary crew transportation system for long-duration missions to ISS. Most importantly, that Dragon can safely transport passengers. This historic flight used a brand new spacecraft, like some notable predecessors. We think about uh, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and then Space Shuttle. Those are really the four times in history when we have put humans on brand new spacecraft. And now we're doing it for a fifth time. The rocket that will take Crew Dragon to space is one of the most critical pieces of the mission. It follows a standard set by the Saturn V, the rocket that took Apollo astronauts to the moon, and still the most powerful rocket on the planet releasing a whopping 7.6 million pounds of thrust at launch. The space shuttle debuted in 1981 as the world's first reusable spacecraft. It launched strapped to two rocket boosters and glided back to Earth. Crew Dragon is a free-flying spacecraft it gets its lift into space atop a rocket, like the Apollo missions. The 23-story tall SpaceX Original delivers nearly 2 million pounds of thrust. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA, go SpaceX. The profile is somewhat different for Dragon than it is for shuttle. You tend to pull more Gs. With Falcon 9, when we have the staging from first to second stage, you get kind of a weightlessness. Then the G profile could experience somewhere on the order of four plus Gs, whereas shuttle, we were limited to just three Gs. Putting humans atop any rocket 
requires risk and an escape plan. The most complex engineering tests ever done. We actually put Dragon on top of Falcon, launch the Falcon, and then initiate the launch escape system. And we demonstrated that Dragon is capable of, of carrying the crew away from uh, Falcon um, in the event of an emergency. Extensive testing and test flights covering every aspect of this mission have been going on for years. I think we have pounded the issues associated with Falcon and Dragon more than any other mission we've had in our history. We have been to the International Space Station 21 times. This race for space will open a new chapter for the U.S., but requires great risk and has not been without its serious challenges. Boeing's Starliner narrowly avoided a disaster during a 2019 unmanned flight test. The spacecraft failed to reach the space station due to a software glitch, but returned successfully to Earth. And while SpaceX has completed a major milestone, it's come at a big price, overcoming many hurdles. It's been 18 years working towards this goal. That when starting SpaceX, we may, maybe had a 10% chance of reaching orbit. It took us uh, four attempts just to get to orbit with Falcon 1. In the last two years, Falcon and Dragon have experienced several test failures, but all the learning has brought them to this point. We should not lose sight of the fact that this is a test flight, that we're taking it very, very seriously from a safety perspective.